welcome back. The king of the death match. The 13th best professional wrestler in the world, according to some publications. Mm -hmm. And now uh, one of the top figures in musical theater. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Cardona is here. Did I get it all? I mean, that's some of it. Hey, is this is this audio and video? Yeah. Or just no. Oh, yeah, okay, we got it all. So I'm glad I have the nice professional backdrop. I might as well show off uh, my major bendy. Get your major bendies right now. Majorpodmerch.com. Sam, do you have any major bendies? Uh, I have the one that you were giving out at the panel at Comic Con for free. Uh, the the tan Matt bendy. I have the tan Matt bendy. Okay, yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'm no. Surprised, I'm surprised you don't have a whole collection. Well, I don't yet. I mean, I'm, I'll probably get the uh, high spots. Nick Gage and the high spots okay. Danhausen. I was thinking. I was literally actually just thinking today because I was listening to your podcast talking about high spots getting those, and yeah. I was like, maybe I should get like a major bendy of everybody who's been in the studio and like have them somewhere. So sure. like Effie's been in here and right. Gage has been in here, and and I've never been. I've never been invited to the studio. We. I mean, would you come? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I was in town, I would. Yeah. If I was in town. Yeah. 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 Well, all right. I'm yeah. going to start. I mean, be careful what you wish for, because I'm going to start hitting you up and okay. going, hey, I've been checking your calendar. I see you're in town. Would you want to come sure. by? Sure. And you're going to be in town um, <laughs> on November 14th, actually. That's right, baby. You're going to back, back to Jersey by popular City. popular demand. The last match returns you so that's right you are you just at this space in your career where you're just trying everything like let's just try it let's just see um i can see how it appears the way but not necessarily uh i've never wanted to be an actor uh, but hey if, if marvel calls me and wants to be the next superhero i'm not gonna turn that down by any means and uh this was presented to me and at first I was like, oh, God, like a wrestling musical. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to do this. But then I was talking to the producers and they were so passionate about it. And I read the script and it was actually really good. And it felt like something I could sink my teeth into. And I definitely felt like it could be something. And I didn't want to uh, turn it down. And then it blow up and me regret turning it down. So, so that's it, pretty much what happened. Well, it's going to go one of two ways, right? It's either going to that or you, or I mean, it's wrestling. So I'm sure that in the right. beginning you were like, this isn't even going to happen. This isn't even a, <laughs> like, this is just a guy right. saying he's going to do something. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was looking at the other people on board and they're like starring in Broadway currently. So I'm like, guys like Ramin, uh, who is the, the lead. Uh, well, co-lead, I guess I consider myself a co-lead. <laughs> But I'm like, if he's doing this, if he's taking time, you know, he's on Funny Girl right now. Uh, if he's taking time to do this, well, I'd be a fool to turn it down. Right, right. right. And I mean, obviously, you've considered yourself a singer for a long time. Hosky was available on iTunes. You know, you're you're somebody. Did they pull it down? I don't know if they did or did not. I haven't, it I haven't checked. <laughs> it's almost a 10 year anniversary of Hosky. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And it goes back to like, yeah, growing up in Long Island, wanting to be in a boy sure. band. That's you right. know, now this is it. You get to go and and sing your heart out. I mean, do you feel <laughs> like you're a good singer? Or are you are you qualified? Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. You can you can download the album right now, Spotify, iTunes, and you could hear me sing my song. I'm awesome. Wow! You should do that, Sam. After this recording, well, I, yeah, maybe we'll put a li you link in the use description. Probably LimeWire or something because you're a cheap <laughs> SOB. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try to find it on BitTorrent. I'm gonna see if I can torrent it and uh, and get it on the on the on the arm, yeah. uh, as it were. But that's that's very exciting. Did you do you feel like uh, after you've done this that this is something that you're gonna want to do more of? So, okay, so I did the first two shows, and not that I thought it was going to be easy. There's, I did not. I did not anticipate how hard and how stressful it would be. Right. Um, you know, so the whole crew had, you know, a week and a half, two weeks of rehearsals. I'm actually still an active wrestler. I was in the UK wrestling. So I came and had like maybe three or four days of rehearsals. I had to memorize this whole script. Listen, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't read the whole script. You know, like, I mean, I did at that point. But when I accepted the role, I just read up to my part. I thought, oh, OK, that's it. Right? I didn't realize, like, I'm the main dude. So I'm, I'm in the entire thing, which was 
it's something I'm not used to because like, okay, wrestling, you, you get ready for your match the match is over. You can relax. Uh, uh-uh, not here. You gotta, you gotta go do your next seat. Yeah. And then your next scene and your next scene and your next scene. And then, Holy shit. The, the finish of the show is a match. <laughs> and then you actually have to do a match. This is what I was thinking when you were talking about doing it. Cause it's like when you're especially as busy as you are right now, just every weekend doing something right. when you're wrestling, you know, you've done this long enough that you can show up and go, okay, what are we doing tonight? You know, for a bigger match, oh, you kind of, oh, but like, even you, for this, when I got to rehearsals, I got the match down in a second. Right. Easy. Right. Easy. That's, that was the easiest part. But then you get to it's memorize the, a whole play. Right. Yeah. And like, and the, and the dialogue, the back and forth, it's not just like a bunch of different promos. It's dialogue back and forth. That's what was very, very challenging. And luckily the rest of the cast and crew were so encouraging. So understanding. Uh, they're probably talking shit about me behind my back <laughs> to my face. They really made me feel comfortable and that, that helped a lot. And it went a long way. Wow. And you felt good about it. You felt good about the first performance. I felt okay about the first performance. Second performance, I thought I nailed it. <laughs> All right, you good? <laughs> you, had to, you had to do one to get it out, and then by the second um, one. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm excited. I knew that there was a plan for this to keep going, mm-hmm. but I didn't know what the exact plan was. I still don't, to be honest. I know I'm attached to it, and as far as it goes, I'm along for the ride. Yeah. So we got a show coming up uh, November 14th. Two more shows. And uh, I'm very, very excited. But again, I'm still an active wrestler. So I have NWA uh, that weekend going for the world title. I'm flying Monday morning right to the show, like literally from the airport, Uh changing and performing. Like, I don't even get to do the run through. (laughs) I mean, hopefully I remember those lines. Yeah. Are you going to be reading it on the plane? Like kind of refreshing? It to be. Yeah, 100%. Like it was weeks ago. I don't remember all the lines. Of course. Okay. So is that that what you do? Because like. I do a lot of different things and I try to just my method of of doing all these different shows and stuff is just to worry about what's in front of me when it's right in front exactly. of me. And right. so is that so you'll be like, OK, right before the world title match, of the NWA, you'll be focused on like, OK, this is the story we're telling. Right. And then as soon as that match is done, OK, the next thing up is the musical. So I'm going to focus on making sure the musical is right. Yeah, I could definitely juggle a couple things, but to have 100% focus has to be exactly what's in front of me, what's the next thing in front of me. That will get all my focus. What's been... But but I'm always ready, Sam. I forgot about that Uh I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I'm always ready. Yeah, and I've noticed you've been uh, reaching out to some of the more esteemed members of the media about coming and, and seeing the play. I mean, listen, this was not my idea. Uh, The producer, Jeremiah, reached out and said, hey, do you know Sam Roberts? (laughs) I think I think my exact quote was "fuck Sam Roberts." Uh, but, um, I love, but I love that. You know how much I love that somebody's coming up to you and going, uh, "Hey, Matt, you don't know Sam Roberts, do you?" Oh, God. It, I told you it, it. It was so painful to type that invite out to you. It really was. It hurt, right? But, oh my god! Especially because oh. you knew it's like free ticket. That sounds good to me. Yeah, I know. Sam will <laughs> do anything for a free ticket. <laughs> Oh, well, I think that's great. I mean, but, but, okay. So you, you, how long has it been since you were back from your injury? Uh, I came back at the end of August. So it's going to be about three months, right? September, October. Two eh, months. Two and a half months. Yeah. yeah well, months. yeah. Basically all of September, all of October. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy that it's only been that long. Cause I feel like you hit the ground running and just went like, it picked up right where you left off taking every like every every opportunity every day you know and just going 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 now you're doing european tours as well right yeah i mean i'm not uh somebody who stops even the injury i didn't really miss any bookings the only bookings i missed were the ones where promoters didn't want to bring me in right but most places did i went to australia and cut promos in Madison chelsea with a torn bicep or a surgically <laughs> repaired bicep because uh-huh. people know macadona's money you know what i'm saying i guess so i was busy all summer long, if not more busy, because on my off days, I had to do rehab. <laughs> you know, so I'm doing the major wrestling podcast, still making my bookings and rehabbing my injury. So I was more busy. Yeah. And, 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 and like you, yeah. launching a toy line. Well, well, you know, I mean, the major bendies, uh, it, it's, it's been about, we started last Christmas. We, yeah. we dropped series one and uh, we've made so many by now. I can't believe you don't ha- have any. That's because we don't send them to you for free. I'm yeah. sure if we offered for free, you'd have the whole set. Yeah, I mean, I got my I got my Terry Funk here. What do you, I, oh. I, I think, 
<laughs> you still in that Mattel Elite squad? Of course. Am I still in the Mattel Elite squad? Of course. I'm the I'm the longest tenured uh, 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 member. I think at this. I, well, I don't know how long you were in, but. I heard a rumor on the Wrestling Figs message board that Kathy Kelly would be replacing you. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think they're going to put it to a fan vote, so I might be in oh, trouble. Please. Wow. <laughs> you might actually win that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's why. OK, see, that's why I don't feel bad, because I feel right. like, you know, I didn't replace you and Hawkins and Brian Myers, you know, well, that got fired. That, yeah, yeah. You got kicked out. Right. You got thrown. Yeah, Vince, Vince kicked us out. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I want him out of the elite squad. Yeah, that's, that's what happened, to be honest. Yeah, you got fired <laughs> from the elite squad. And they were like, you know, these guys wrestle too. Well, whatever yeah, we have to uh, do to get them out yeah, of the elite get them squad. Out. Get them out. <laughs> but you've maintained your relationship. I mean, I feel like you're, you're elite squad adjacent. Yeah, because, you know, uh, I think the, the people on the inside of Mattel know that we have the passion and they more importantly know we have the influence. So, uh, you know, well, we can bury something real. I mean, that's why Bill McKenna blocked me on Instagram. <laughs> he did Bill McKenna block you. Yeah, he did. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> was, God. was there a, was there a, a, like a tipping point that was like, okay, that like, that's the post that did it. Uh, I'm sure there was, I don't recall. You don't know. And a, a few months later I saw him at, uh, Rick Flair's last match. Yeah. Was it Rick? No, no, no. It was the, the wrestling showcase. I do. I have so many bookings. They all blend together. You know what I'm saying? When I won the wrestling showcase became the first ever wrestling showcase champion. Wow. I saw Bill McKenna uh, at a bar. I went up and said, hello. Two minutes later, he left. left the whole bar. <laughs> he's a, he's done with you. You're on, you're he's on done. the shit list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's on mine. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, I'm going to find out what it was. Like what was, what was the final straw that he was like, I'm, I, I'm done. There's so many. Who knows? Who knows what it was? <laughs> That's great. Speaking of figures. Yeah. Okay. And speaking yeah. of death matches, yeah. Yeah. a figure, uh, uh, zombie sailor previewed a death match. King Matt Cardona, a uh, two pack right. based on the match with Nick Gage. That, that match was already, I mean, a, a year and a half ago, almost. I know. I know. And we have any, do we have any updates on when we're getting a death match Cardona Zombie Sailor? It was supposed to come out already, but it's not out, obviously. Uh, there's also going to be a ringside collectibles two pack from the same match. Is that so, by, uh, uh, is that the, in the ringside major like figures? The Remco, yeah, yeah the, the, the AWA Remco He Man style. Yeah. So pretty cool that I'm going to get uh, at least two figures out of this match. Uh, I mean, that match, it's, you know, it changed my whole life, changed my whole career. Um, I'm very, very proud of that match. So I'm glad to have uh, figures based on it. What was the worst part of that match? Like, now that you've had all this time to reflect, and I mean, like, obviously the anticipation building towards it, you must have been out of your mind because you haven't done any of that stuff leading in. What was the what was, what was was the most painful part of the death match with Nick Gage? You know, I went through glass, light tubes, pizza cutters. The most... <sighs> Painful part was afterwards, actually. Like, there's no doctors backstage at GCW. There no? Was this, no. I mean, there's this lady who said she was a nurse. Uh, <laughs> she stitched me up, did, like, a Frankenstein-style stitch job on me. Uh -huh. told, told me the stitches were dissolvable. They were not. I got <laughs> infected. Uh, um, and months later, I still had glass in my back that the body rejected. And basically, it was like... At the surface, I had to go get it removed. Pieces of glass. Oh my god! Still in my back. And when you so go the to a the aftermath, was the worst. Did you have to explain to a doctor why there was glass in your back? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. You have yeah. to understand deathmatch wrestling. Uh, That's right. You know, we I, I go through glass. Well, you're the king, I guess. That's now, right. I, I've retired from deathmatch wrestling, but I retired as the king. You have retired. I retired immediately. <laughs> like one and done. Did you That's see? It. Did you see Nick Gage? Uh, commented on you recently? I did not. What did he say? Well, he said that uh, he felt disrespected by you. He said okay. he, he liked John Moxley and that Mox yeah. came in and did a bunch of stuff. He, well, he used the P word to describe you is what he did. And he said that you would just come in and, and, and kind of... <laughs> it wasn't that P word. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he said, you, well, he said you'd come in for your one yeah. death match. You had gotten all right. the credibility and credit for it. And then yeah. you didn't do it again. And he felt disrespected by that. Well, you know what? Uh, to that, I argue that 
I stuck around. Mm. I am the reason GCW sold out the Hammerstein Ballroom. I'm the reason. Singularly? No. Yeah, I'll say that. Wow. I will say that if I didn't go to GCW to have that Nick Gage death match, that momentum would not have been started that led them to Hammerstein. I will 100% say that. And that's a shoot. That's not me being a gimmick. Right. Because that, that match trended number one over the Olympics, over UFC that night. Moxley comes in. He wins the title. Doesn't do anything with it. Right. He's never trending. He's never trending when he does the 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 death match stuff. And I understand it's cool. Oh, we got this AEW guy as a champ, but he's not doing anything for the company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did he do for the company? You're saying you you went so far out of your comfort zone and made so many people go like, look at this spectacle, look at what we're right. seeing. Like you're yeah, hundred percent. Even Dave Meltzer was worried about your safety. Was he really? Remember, Dave was Dave was very upset when everybody was throwing bottles at well, you. That, that was bullshit. Dave also said that was fake, which it was not. No. So, no, I was there I mean, that night. It was, it so wasn't was I. Fake. Yeah. So was I. So was I. I was scared to death. I legitimately had to be brought out a different way. Well, that, that was, yeah. I mean, you say you retired from death matches, but then I saw yeah. you and your beautiful bride, Chelsea, renew your vows in front of the GCW universe, as you say. Right. And. Right. Something I did for GCW, give them, you know, a wedding. There's never been a GCW wedding. And a lot of and GCW that, fans I, were probably like, look, all these light tubes are great, but when do we get a wedding? Right, exactly. Yeah. I did it for the GCW universe. They mm-hmm. probably have never been to a nice wedding in their life. <laughs> so I brought it to the showboat. And then Nick Gage comes out, destroys me, pizza cutter all over the place. My mom was hysterically crying backstage. I There's blood oozing out of my face. Chelsea's dress destroyed, covered in blood, covered in cake. But that's something I did for the GCW universe, and I feel like I don't get the respect. But so you don't think that you don't have something like that happen to you? I mean, not only uh, bodily damage, but humiliation, right? Right. Right. And you don't go, okay, I need to fight this Nick Gage guy again. He just ruined ruined my wedding, my renewal ceremony. Well, here, here's the thing. How do you top that first match, right? You don't do it again at the showboat casino, right? <laughs> you know, right? like and if you did it, and if you did it at Hammerstein, yeah, they, they don't let you do stuff like that. So right. where do you do a match like that? Right. Yeah, you can't do it in New York State, right? No, and I'm not doing it on the fucking Jersey boardwalk like they just did against Moxley. <laughs> You're not going to do that? <laughs> no. So huh. I've retired as king. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. And which it, is it's, it's trademarked as well, so it's official. I saw that you went to the gimmick attorney. I saw the certificate. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's the, I don't mess around. It's the real deal, man. Right. So, but you, so you don't you don't. That's not a world title that you need to have again. Then. Oh no, I absolutely want to have it again, but just not by under your own. It's, it's not the GCW Deathmatch Champion, right? It's a GCW World Championship. And I, I love GCW. I love the roster. I think everyone's hungry. I think everyone brings something to the table. I think Brett Lauderdale is a cheap SOB, but I think he is passionate. <laughs> and I think he is, uh, you know, ahead of the curve on a lot of things. Um, and I, I truly think GCW is the third big promotion in the United States. I don't think it's an indie. It doesn't just run in Jersey once or twice a month. It runs all over the country, all over the world. Every single weekend. That's not an independent promotion, in my opinion. That's true. I mean, and the fact that, like, the L.A. shows are just as hot as the Atlantic City shows, which are just as hot as the shows in Michigan, which are, I mean, it's it's right. Atlanta, remarkable. Atlanta, Mexico, yes. Japan, England. They, they literally go all over the world. At that point, it's not an independent. Who's somebody in GCW that you're like, the world should be more aware of this person when you talk about the roster? Um, well, I think, you know, Janela, Effie, guys I've already given the rub to, Nick Cage. Um, <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of talent there. Uh, Jimmy Lloyd. You know, you know Jimmy Lloyd? Of course I know Jimmy Lloyd. I, I just want to fix him up, you know, get him on a little diet. Yeah, it would be funny. Beard. You should do the uh, the Nikolai Volkov thing with him where you're Ted DiBiase and he's your Nikolai and you're there to, well, you're there you know, to help I him out. I just want to be my broski. You know, I want to help him out. I want to, you know, he he's a child actor, former child actor. What if he gets back? What if I get him a role in the last match musical? That could be huge for him. That could be huge. 
And that could be what right? he needs. It's something to break him out of the his motivation. shell. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because that's true. Because he hangs out with all these people that maybe it's like, it's okay to, you know, not take care of yourself. And, right. and, and like, you know, you know, but black t-shirt and, and sweatpants. And it's like, right. well, what and if we. Plums all over it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know right. what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, What if we I get him in front of. Yes. What if we get him in front of an audience? A musical a theater major audience. makeover. I love that. Yeah, you should do that in front of the GCW audience. The, I, I would, I would love to. The it's Jimmy Lloyd Jimmy, major though. makeover. I, it's all up to Jimmy if he wants to change his ways and be a superstar. That's the way to phrase it. That's right. That's the way to That's phrase right. it. That's right. See, I, I, I'm not selfish. I'm doing this for GCW. Yeah, you're like the yeah. Gary V of GCW. I am the Paul E. <laughs> you are. <laughs> the guy now you say Brett Lauderdale is uh, is is cheap. Is he not yes. paying you what you think you're you deserve? Oh, that's I mean one hundred percent. But because um, I also heard I was listening <laughs> to one of your podcasts and you were uh, laughing. Maybe it wasn't GCW. Maybe it was a different tour. But it might have been GCW at the fact that like you were on some tour and. Uh, all the wrestlers had to like pack into hotel rooms. Oh, but, that's GCW. Yeah, yeah. But you got your own suite. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was all these apartments and I felt really bad because, you know, everyone's sharing different apartments and uh, uh-uh, not me, pal. <laughs> so I had my own apartment. There was a, a spare bedroom in my apartment that I didn't use. And all these people are, you know, sleeping on floors everywhere else. But I'm like, no, nope, I, I, it's in my contract, pal. I got my own, own place to stay. <laughs> you didn't invite anybody to crash in your... I, I did not. I <laughs> felt real bad. But I also didn't feel bad because they should have worked into their deal, too. That's true. That's tr- Look, how many of them have had a WrestleMania moment, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Man. So speaking of WrestleMania moments, you know, though, I feel That's like right. the, I feel like the wrestling world has... Uh, has changed a lot in the last three months. Uh, have you gotten any feelers from either WWE or AEW about like, all right, things are changing all over the place. We see what you're doing. Even just that. Sam, Sam I respect you as a broadcast journalist. I do. Yeah. But you're a fool to ask me that question on air because, okay, let's say I did, mm-hmm. right? Am mm-hmm. I going to reveal it to you on the Not Sam Wrestling Podcast? I mean, right? No, <laughs> yeah. I'm not. And then let's say I didn't. Right. Why would I tell you a- and ruin the suspense? No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's so, a, here's the I I appreciate you asking the question, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna answer those those questions here. I'm not I plead f- the fifth. No comment. That's because you're a professional. That's right. There are people that maybe are not as much of a professional that loose lips, you know what I mean? Right. Or or they stutter through the answer, but not me. Let me ask you this. If you were let's say let's say uh Triple H is like, you know, I see what you're doing. I like right. it. Like, you know, you've you've yeah. clearly you've done what you're supposed to do. You leave sure. Well, I mean, I have. hundred percent. I'm, I'm not only and this is a shoot as well, I am not only the number one free agent in pro wrestling, I am the agent. We I mean I am, there, there's nobody else. I am the blueprint of what to do when you get released from WWE. Yeah, you value. Now, did I take things from guys like like Drew McIntyre, or Cody? Sure, but I blew it up and did it my way. That's the key, right? That you did it your way. So, but okay. So let's say I mean your top twenty, your top fifteen PWI five hundred. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Unsigned. Unsigned. That, Only that's... free agent in the top twenty. Number thirteen is high. No. Not high enough, in my opinion. Oh, all right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna differ there then. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but but let's say that happens. Do you? Sure. Would you? Kind of be insistent on being like, yeah, but if we do this again, we should do it as Matt Cardona. Or do you think that going back as Zack Ryder, you could tell the same story? I would love, you know, um, you know, I would have a conversation. Not saying we haven't already. Not saying we, you know, who's, have or have not. Who's to but, say? Who's to say? Who's to say? I think Zack Ryder's dead. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, would it be cool? A woo woo woo. Would that get a bigger pot maybe for one night as opposed to the always ready? Maybe. Right. Because that's more familiar with the WWE universe and audience. But if I were to go back, it, I think it has to be as Matt Cardona. I I, I say like, uh, you know, Razor Ramon came back to Scott Hall. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. the Zack Ryder thing, it was 
listen, I'm so fortunate for that time as Zack Ryder. It has set me up. When I say WWE was my developmental, that's not a shot. That's not anti-WWE. That's WWE taught me everything. It taught me how to have this run in all these promotions. It taught me how to do these interviews. It taught me how to be a superstar. Uh, so I'm forever grateful uh, to WWE for that. Um, but if I would ever go back, I think it has to be as, as me, as Matt Cardona. Uh, to go back as Zack Ryder, eh, you know? Yeah. No, I do know. That, that's how I feel. I mean, I think it's similar to like when, uh, even when Cody came back at WrestleMania, when he did the right. one spot where he acknowledged Stardust for a second. Sure. Just got the sure. pop. Like everybody, like I, I acknowledge it. Right, right. But I'm I'm the American Nightmare. I've built right. the American there, there, Nightmare. There's as... no way I'd be making towns doing the woo, 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 broski boot. Right. You know. Right. A, a, a special occasion, sure. Right. Right. Even right. now I do it a special occasion. But it's, I, I have no desire to, to, to do that. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially because look at look at how you brought up the value of Matt Cardona. Right. Why would you not capitalize on that? I, I've totally reinvented myself and, and, you know, some things strategic, some things just being always ready for any situation. Like, OK, I did not plan when I got released. Oh, I'm going to be this death match guy. No, it happened. It fell to my lap and I made the most of the opportunity. Did it blow up and explode? way more than I could have imagined. Yes, but I ran with that, you know, and that's, I think that's what this always ready is all about being always ready for any and all opportunities. Not everything's going to be a success. Not everything is going to, you know, get me to that next level, but I have to at least try. Right. And that's all I've ever wanted was an opportunity to try. Is there any, uh, situation where you are wearing not your own merch? Like I've never, I don't know that I've ever seen you, with a logo on your body. I'm not taking a shot. I'm not saying this right. is positive or negative. It's just, right. I've never seen you wear a shirt or a hat right. that right. doesn't have your own face or logo on it. I've never, I've never seen it. Why would I promote somebody else? I mean, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Right? Yeah, no, I right? guess. I mean, I want people mm -hmm. to know who I am. I want people to know who the Major Wrestling Affair podcast is. But I this, want people to buy my merch, not somebody else's merch. This is like, even if you're going out to lunch, though, you'll be like, you'll throw on a, a broski shirt or something. If you see me through an airport, mm -hmm. major pod hoodie, <laughs> back on a hat, when it was the pandemic, internet champion mask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All the way, baby. Yeah. All the way. No, yeah. I, promotion. I'm a walking billboard. I did. Yeah, and that's smart. If, if I'm not, if I'm not going to promote myself, who is? That's true. But does yeah. like your wife ever be like, could you 100%, not, could sure. you not do that? Could you, could sure, you just but not? She likes it when I'm buying her a Gucci bag on right. all the money I made for my merch. Do you remind her that this is what bought that? <laughs> no, I mean, maybe sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> the president be one step too far. Yeah. I yeah. did notice uh, at Comic Con, you were walking around in the bright white major PBR jacket with the bendies on it and everything. It was a billboard. Well, I mean, it was for sale at the Nerds Clothing booth. Why would I not promote it? That's true. Someone says, holy shit, that's a nice jacket. Where would I get it? Over there, Nerds Clothing. Right, right. And it's okay. like, if anybody has a question, like, I don't know, would this be cool to wear? Well, Cardona's wearing it. Obviously. There cool. you go. It's cool. He's not going to wear something that's right. not cool. Right. Yeah. Is there any uh, merch that you've wanted to create for yourself that, that you're still kind of figuring out, like, exactly how to execute? Man, that's a that's a loaded question. I I put out a lot of stuff. No, I know. In the past two years, yeah. I mean, we have our own action figure line. Yeah. Um. I we did major pod condoms. Believe it or not. <laughs> uh, I didn't know uh, that. I I did I did my own sneakers. I saw that. Uh, I don't know if there's anything we haven't done. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, you, you know? guys you guys did a program with full match card. You guys sometimes I fingers. feel like we did everything. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like you guys do stuff like a lot of it's going to make a profit. Sure. But some of it is like, I just want this to exist. I just want a thing. I just want this to exist. So let's just make it. Sure. But nothing loses money. I say this in life. Crumbs make crumb cake. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm not saying I'm getting rich off these foam fingers. Yeah. We're getting rich off these always ready dog tags. You make a little here. You make a little there. At the end of the year, holy shit. I mean, this might be hard to believe, but 
that I made more money mm-hmm. in 2022 than I made in my any, any year of my WWE career. And you think about that for a second. That's- Independent wrestler, unsigned, making more money than a WWE contract. That is the truth. Because and, I and, busted my ass. And by the way, multi- most of those months in 2022, you weren't even wrestling. No, just three of them. Just three. All right. That's still a quarter of the year, though. Right, but I was still doing all those bookings. Right. So, I mean, I have the major recipe for a podcast. I wrestle. We have major bendies. It's, it's again, crumbs make crumb cake. We do our live uh, major recipe for podcast shows. We have our own wrestling promotion, FWF. So it's just a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. End of the day, end of the year, got a big fucking crumb cake. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny okay. that you said crumbs make crumb cake because that reminded me, I believe Cody Rhodes brought that up at the Comic Con panel this year when he was talking. Oh, he stole that line from me. He better no, no, no. Give me he, credit. he gave you credit. Okay, good. In the context of talking about, he said, it's funny, you said Brett Lauderdale is cheap because Cody said that you are very cheap. I think. That That's absolute bullshit. And I know he's been starting that rumor. Yeah. Uh, you know, I heard him say things that I don't buy rounds when we go mm-hmm. to the theme parks. Mm-hmm. That's absolute bullshit. <laughs> and I take offense to that because there's a lot of Cody Rhodes lies. You know, a lot of things he says to, to get an LOL out of people. Oh, but wow. this one really uh, is offensive because it's so untrue. Well, it's also, I mean, it's especially, if it is true, it would be especially offensive because people know you're spending like, you know, thousands of dollars on toys. So the idea that right. now Cody Rhodes is letting us know that in your personal right. life, you're very cheap. That, that doesn't, that, that, you don't look that, good. That, you know, that's I'm the thousand dollar broski. That's absolute bullshit. That's just a lie. It is. Fabrication. Yeah. Wow. He's just trying to get an LOL. Uh, a clickbait, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. Che- a, l- a little cheap pop. Yeah, cheap pop. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. not true. I'm, I'm, I'm not cheap. That's really... At all. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, you bought that... I see it in a figure right behind you. You got that purple and gold tuxedo and you made a life-size version of it, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's not life-size. No, 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 but you made a life-size version of the tux. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to wear it. <laughs> and I've gotten micro brawlers out of it, other action figures, t shirts, merch. I have uh thousand dollar bills with my face on it, broski bucks, we call them. Of course, broski you bucks. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. crumbs make crumb cake. That's right. That's right, baby. Boom. That's right. Now there are some merch items we made that weren't, you know, instant hits. Like, you know, one summer we made some beach balls. Sure. You know? <laughs> Sure. Maybe we had to give some some extra stock away. Maybe we didn't sell out of the beach balls. That's all right. But it all works out in the end. That's, yeah, yeah. You look at the yeah. end. Of, you look at the end of the year. What's the bottom uh, line? Right. And and it's you're you're in the black. Right. Like you know, we made Rory Fox rapid delivery Rory Fox micro brawlers. Mm-hmm. Were they a sellout? No. No. But you know, we did a good thing because Rory Fox never had a figure before he probably never will again. Right. So we made his dream come true. <laughs> Although yeah. it would be great in your, because you could do it with your Remco toy line. If you did like rapid delivery, Rory Fox, like a figure that had the jeans from true life yeah. and you could well, rip I, them off and he had the tights on under it. I want to do one where he has the tights and those <laughs> rip off and he's just like a He-Man figure. There's no, there's no genitals. There's nothing, you know? So yeah. he's just naked under there. Right. It's just, but he's just a eunuch. Like there's no, right. Right. No genitals, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like a Ken doll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you are you surprised? I would, I would love that. You think that's a good idea? I think it'd be a good I, marketing I opportunity. Great, I mean, limited edition. I'm not saying mass produce it. It's for the collectors. Maybe add a 250. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. pick. I, that's one I would probably pick up. Sure, because <laughs> that's a know. that's a classic ECW moment. That's right, because I am an ECW original. You, uh, which leads me to Bully Ray, who's been extreme shaming me. Uh, saying I'm not extreme or hardcore, but I am. And we have a big, big match in December at the ECW Arena. Are you going to be there, Sam? Uh, can you get me in? I don't know about that. You know? <laughs> but I, I'm going to end the Bully Ray because um, tables are so like 2000. I'm going to put it through a door. Of course you're going to put him through a yeah. door because this is, right. this is indie wrestling in 2022. That's, we don't do tables right. anymore. That's tables right. are expensive. Right through the door. Yeah, you're going to put... <laughs> Cardona! Get the door. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. Right. That, so how did the uh, beef between you and Bully Ray start? Because he's on his stupid little show, busted open. Yeah. You know, you know, he just extreme shaming me, you know, saying I'm not hardcore. I'm not extreme. I'm not the deathmatch king. I'm not an ECW original when clearly I'm all of those things. Did that hurt like emotionally knowing what you had gone through in that deathmatch match? with Nick Gage and other stuff that you've done in GCW, by the way, that's not right. the, that's the, that's the 
peak of your hardcoreness. But the, I mean, I sold out the Hammerstein Ballroom. You, well, yeah, I mean, you were part of the sellout of the Hammerstein right. Ballroom. I mean, the right. shit you're doing with Effie, you were doing some pretty hardcore stuff with Effie. You did right. like you, That's you've right. bled, you've bled. And when you see somebody uh, who's like a hardcore legend, I would say, like Bully Ray, sure. saying that none of that stuff counts, that you're not hardcore. It just hurts my feelings, you know. It did hurt your feelings. It it, it did hurt my feelings. Wow. I'm sorry. But now I'm going to have to shut them up in the ECW arena, whatever they call it now. I, I don't know what they call it. The Philly cheesesteak arena, whatever <laughs> yeah. it's called now, whatever you it know? is. Yeah. Whatever they call it. Oh, and you're leaving beautiful Florida to get to Philadelphia in December just to do that. I mean, I'm doing it for the people. That's nice. You know, I'm doing it for the original hardcore ECW fan base who want me to succeed, who want me to shut up uh, bully once and for all. Aside from the death match, I, is, I guess, I mean, this might be, I might have answered my own question. I would imagine aside from the death match with Nick Gage, is winning the NWA title oh. the top thing? I mean, how is it not up there? Winning yeah. the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship um, was something that was not on my bingo card, you know? Again, something that fell into place, and I'm always ready, and I won. And I think I did a great job as that champion. And this isn't a shot to anybody in NWA, but if they want to take it as a shot, so be it. Go get other bookings. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I, I brought that title everywhere. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like, you know, Trevor Murdoch, he's a champion now. He won it. What, in June when I had to give it up? Mm -hmm. His only defense mm -hmm. was the, the pay-per-view in August. Like, go work some indies. You're the right. world champion. Travel all over the world. At least leave your goddamn house. Right. You know what I'm saying so at hard times three, me, Trevor, Tyrus. I mean, I have to win for the sake of the NWA. I'm the savior of the NWA. And I think Tyrus would do a good job. He, he'd be on Fox News with it on his shoulder. Yeah, that'd be great publicity. But Trevor, I mean, listen, he's great in the ring, bell to bell. But mm -hmm. this isn't, you know, this is sports entertainment. Mm. He's got to do something. Start right. a podcast. I don't know. Start a you know, start a farm. I don't know. Trevor's <laughs> farm. So I don't know. Do something. Something with that title on it that people yeah. see. Visibility. Yeah. With the title yeah. becomes, I mean, that goes back to being a billboard, right? And I feel like there was, a, there was a hot minute there where a lot of companies realized that you could be their billboard and you were traveling town to town, state to state, country to country, continent sure. to continent. With I think at one point I had like six or seven titles. Yeah. How do you travel with seven titles? I did not bring them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only time they were in my bag at once was for that photo shoot where, of course, I sold eight by tens. And I still do to this day the Ultimo Broski eight by ten. Very popular at the merch stand. Right. So do you do you make the call like you're looking like I will bring these two titles? I'm not going to bring any right. titles. Does it depend on the show? Internet title always comes. Right. The most prestigious title in wrestling always comes. Um, is that because because um, uh, you made it? Well, because I it changed the business. Yeah. Tell me that Z True Long Island story didn't change the business. Tell me. Look me. You're, we're, this is video. Tell me to my face it didn't change the business. I cannot say that. And exactly. I hear it from the people. I mean, I'm sure. That's right. I've seen the the the, the kids now that grew up watching it that are that are emulating it. All I, these kids vlogging. Yeah. That BTE show that started AEW. So really, I'm responsible for AEW. Would you say if there was no Z True Long Island story, there would be no AEW? I'll say it right now. Without Z True Long Island story, there would be no BTE and there would be no e a uh, Let's do that again. This is live, pal. <laughs> We're live, pal. We're live, without, pal. Z True Long <laughs> without Z True Long Island story, there would be no BTE and there would be no AEW. Quote Boom. me on that. Clickbait headline. Sean Ross Sapp going to run with that, baby. <laughs> let's go, Fightful Select. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll leak Fightful it to them early. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like Fightful Select. They have a good Patreon. But if you want to get a really good Patreon, go to majormarks.com. You can listen to the Major Wrestler Podcast early and ad-free. Bonus content, bonus interviews, bonus merch. Are you a uh, are you a Major Marks, Sam? I mean, I've been trying to figure out how I can... Uh, <laughs> politely ask you for free access to the Facebook oh group. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shocked by that. I would join the, I would I would join the uh Patreon only Facebook group for free. We'll see what we can do. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So speak let's get back to figures. What what for yeah. you? You know, cuz I know uh I know you've been real happy with the Mattel creation stuff, you know, I heard you, you guys a great job. Excellent. Uh, the new generation yeah. arena. You bought 11. 
I, I, I did. And guess what I did with them? <laughs> Are they all gone? They're all gone. You sold them all? I sold them all. No way. You didn't well, you didn't you didn't hold any of them? Oh, wait, wait. Well, obviously one loose. Of yeah. course, of course, for your own collection. Yeah, yeah. Right. One I also uh collect those ultimates mint, so one completely sealed mint. I think that yeah, because you got to have the figures. Right. Yeah. Two to hold on forever because it's going to jack up in price. Okay. Okay. And then the other ones I sold on Whatnot every Monday 6:30 p.m. majorwhatnot.com. You go on Whatnot, Sam? No, if you, you know can hook me up, can you hook me up? You know what it is? Yeah, I know what whatnot is. It's yeah. like, uh, yeah, it's like uh, you, you do your own. It's almost like your own home shopping network. I do think right. it's, it's great. Like, it, it's like it's like Instagram Live meets eBay. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's yeah. cool. But you sold, so you so, sold six of them. And what I did was, mm -hmm. I broke them up. I sold the stage Ooh. by itself, Ooh. the rig by itself, Ooh. the diesel by itself, Ooh. the doink by itself, and then the machos came, and I sold the machos by themselves. <laughs> Ching. Thousand dollar broski, baby. That's Thousand right, baby. dollar broski. That's right. That's right. That's Are we right gonna? Right. What's the plan with the uh, Attitude Era uh, Ultimate Edition ring? What's your what's your what's your plan of action? Um, I'll I'll get two of them. Um, I I don't think I have the space to actually build that ring, but I have to get the cane out of there. Right. Right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy excess ones to sell because anyone could buy it on ring set. It's not limited it's like that. No, not that's, limited. that's the right plan. I'll probably yeah, that's that's I'll probably do something similar. Um yeah. you know, what do what do, what is the project that you want next for Mattel's crowdfunding section? Man. That's there, the question, so many, right? Yeah. There's so many cool things. I, I would love an arena. For either the uh, and I'm by arena, I mean like entranceway, stage, um, you know, ring for maybe for the retros or the uh, huh. the superstars. I'm thinking like a ring with a cage, an entranceway, you know, maybe some blue mats, guardrails. Now, obviously, it's for the retro, so it's a lot smaller, won't take up all the space. And you can go all out. You can add more stuff to it. You, you can, can add, add more stuff to it. The guardrails and the right. tables and everything. And of and course, it, if, if they did one, it could work for both the superstars and the retros. It could be in the same scale because yeah. they're essentially the same size. And then would, would you want them to do a new ring or just kind of redo the ring that they've already done? Um, Because the ring was I'd good. Be, I'd be fine if they, you know, kept the new ring, but I'd let's let's redo it a little bit. Like maybe like remember the old uh, the prototype of that Hasbro ring that has the fabric aprons. Yeah. Like. You yeah. Know, yes. Like that. Yes. That would be cool. Yeah. And and that would be the that would be the deal, right? That you could use the arena for your Hasbro's and your retros right. that everybody's putting out and everything. Yeah. Oh my God. Even Hassle Toy making some retros <laughs> yeah, now. Well, he's promising to make them. Well, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. Yeah. I don't, and you could even use that arena for your major bendies. Of course you could. That's right. Majorpodmerch.com. <laughs> Do you have a favorite major bendy other than yourself? Uh, Other than think, your crew, don't tell me any. Anyone in your I think crew, the, the fact that we got Ric Flair. Oh yeah, pretty nuts. Yeah, got Flair done for Flair's last match. Um, I mean, goddamn, Ric Flair in our line of major bendies. So pretty cool. Uh, our next set is coming out in November. Will be Colt Cabana, Effie, Gangrel, and Chelsea Green. Love so that. Yeah, those will be in stock in November. Um, and believe it or not, the number one selling major bendy of all time was Tyrus. And uh, we put those up for pre-order. It was like a two-week pre-order. He talked about it on TV, and it was cha-ching, 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 cha -ching. I, I couldn't believe it. That's that gut so, felt magic. That's right. So those will be uh, arriving in the States end of November, early December, but those are already sold out. So Wow. Already sold out. What an uh, empire. What an empire. We're trying, baby. We're trying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I mean, the the sky's the limit, right? If you if you bet on yourselves and you do the work, the sky's the limit. So you've you right now you are a superstar for Impact Wrestling. You're an Impact Wrestling right. superstar. You're an NWA superstar. Yeah, FWF. FWF, your own promotion, GCW. And, and I'm upset you didn't come to FWF Live Four, Sam. Josh Matthews asked about me. He was there. I know. He told me yeah. that he asked you if I was coming. So that's the second yeah. time. That's the second time. Yeah. Somebody's asked you, is Sam Roberts yeah. going to be here? I wrestled Maven in a tough enough street fight, and I lost. I did watch it. I, I did. <laughs> I did watch it. I saw Josh Matthews interfere. And <laughs> he did. See, I'm a good booker as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Josh, yeah. Seemed, Josh seemed excited about it. It was great. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, I, listen, I wrestle 
anywhere that is going to book me and pay me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <You> know? <laughs> as long as, long as you, you pay my rate, I'll be there. I don't care if it's in front of 10 people or 10,000 people. If you're paying me, I'm there. Right. You're not going to even, a, you, you won't even ask what's the house. Doesn't matter. No interest. <laughs> <laughs> no interest. Oh, I love it. No interest. It's the, I just want the money. I want the buzz, the money, and the gold. That's it. But I think this is Go why on. people, because that's not generally a likable disposition, but I think the reason people can't help but respect it is because not only are you honest about it, but then you take all the money and you put it back into your wrestling collection. Like you're that's such... Right. Still, after all this time, after all the, the stuff that you've been through, after every element of the business that you've been exposed to, like you're still a wrestling fan. It still feels right. like you're acting out the stuff that you wanted to do as a kid. Like you're doing stuff that little little Matt Cardona would have been like, that's so cool. That's my guy. Right. And, and these past two years have been the most creatively fulfilling because I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I can, you know wrestle wherever I want, wear whatever outfit I want, do whatever I want. I don't have to answer to anybody. Uh, you know, that's part of the reason I don't want to sign any contracts anywhere is because call it selfishness or not. I love being my own boss. Yeah. I love not answering to anybody. And I'll tell you what, I'm working harder now and more hours now than I ever have before, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And I think people don't fully comprehend how big of a difference it is when you come up with an idea and you don't go, oh, I'm not even going to ask. Cause I'd have to ask 10 people and they'd right. say no. Or it's like, cause right. you know, they, they, and this is every, every company of every business. When you work for a company, it's serious. X, it's everywhere. It's like, you come up with an idea. It makes perfect sense. Everybody wins, but for whatever reason, it's a no. And that is such a kick in the balls. Like it's, and there's nothing and you just go, all right. And and I think, you know, a lot of times complacency can can come up because of that and everything. And and obviously when you when you go, okay, I figured out how to just be in this position where I can just have these ideas and do them. Just just right. Just do the idea and see what happens. And that's tough to give up. I mean, like, you know, some of the stuff we're doing, you know, for instance, we every year we have the major recipe for a podcast, holiday toy drive. Sam, I'm I'm counting on your donation this year. But like one of the sponsors of the toy drive mm -hmm. is Pat's Blue Ribbon, our <laughs> sponsor. I mean, who else can bring toys for tots at PBR together? Only Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, and the major recipe for a podcast. That's true. You know? That's <laughs> true. Unbelievable. And I also love that you've like like I I, I get a, such a kick out of the fact that you turned like talking about power town toys into like a yeah. full fledged business <laughs> venture. Like somehow they're sponsoring the end of your videos and everything. They are. <laughs> because like I'm sitting there going, the pow pow power town updates are like some of the best things in podcasting. Like this is my right. favorite part right. of your show when you do the power town updates and you just have Listen, this, I, I love power town. It's a great toy line coming out. I believe their <laughs> pre-orders end uh, October 31st. And they, they Get look right now. They look fantastic. They look amazing. Now, you know, Magnum TA, who doesn't want that? Kerry Von Erich. I do. You know, I want the whole first set. When we get to like the 200 guys they signed, I don't know if we need Jacques Rougeau's dad. <laughs> you know, I don't know if we do. I don't know what the, you know what I'm saying? The, I don't know how many of those need to be in existence. I don't know how many would sell. The interview that you guys did with with the guy who runs that toy line was one of my favorite. Rosenthal, he's awesome. He's one of, it's one of my favorite things you guys have ever yeah. done when he's explaining that you don't understand. We're going to do bed sheets and beach right. towels. And I was like, I mean, of course, the Baron Von Roschke beach towel. Right. Like <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage is my favorite wrestler of all time. I don't know if I need an Angelo Papo, <laughs> you know, towel. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, I don't. I don't know if I do. Right. I don't. But maybe right. you'll see it, and you'll be like, "This is so good." Right. I, maybe I'll be a completist. Maybe right. I'll be the ball. <laughs> a power town <laughs> completist. That'd be so difficult. <laughs> I know, especially if they really make all two hundred, you know, of the people they have signed. Yeah, and they will. Be, they will. I, I mean, have faith. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll see. But series one looks awesome. It, yeah. Uh, and make sure you get those. Yeah, they do look awesome. They look. They look amazing. Um. 
Well, and what was it that Austin looked the other day? I mean, you went all out, but they couldn't shave in a goddamn goatee. So here's what I was thinking. I was talking to my <laughs> wife about this and uh, I was like, I think I'm going to shave my, my beard down to a goatee. And then I was looking at it and I was like, yeah. but see, my beard uh, is like one of is like a jawline trick. OK, you know, like I think I, I think I have a really weak jawline. Mm -hmm. And so instead of I was like, well, one, I got to pick one thing. It's either stone cold, but it's a full beard, not a goatee or it's stone cold. But look how weak his jawline is. And I, I would have went for the weak jawline. You would. Well, you don't have a weak yeah. jawline, so you don't have that kind of pain. You have good, a good, strong. You're yeah, a muscular guy. Like you're almost there, you know? Yeah. I walked in. I walked into the to the broadcast office, you know, where everybody is in NXT, and oh, Booker yeah. T was there. And I, as soon as I walked in the room, he went, "Man, you don't look like Stone Cold." <laughs> <laughs> it was the beard. That's why. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. But I had the wrist it tape the on. The yeah, you would have fooled everybody with the goatee. Yeah. Maybe we'll have some Steve Weisers at the last match. It's going down November. 14th. This is yeah. great because you get to see Matt Cardona uh, in, in every element uh, of his performance. You get to see him wrestle. Obviously, there's a match at the end of the show, but you also see the acting and you see the singing, singing, singing. dancing, kicking ass. Actually, I don't dance. Right. But, uh, <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. It, it's it's theater meets wrestling. It, it's it's something I can't even describe, you know, because. You know, you read the script and the script says, all right, Alexander Swagger gets in the ring. Ben Vengeance gets in the ring. The bell rings. They lock up. Right. But when the fans are there and interacting, you have to interact back with the fans. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to Phantom of the Opera. The fans are chanting. They don't they don't, you know, improv. <laughs> right. They're a fan of the opera. <laughs> right. So that's what's so interesting about this show. It's that it's just an experience. It's truly an interactive experience. And you have to uh, be there to experience it. Well, I'll probably be there November 14th. Well, with a free ticket. I'm sure you will be. <laughs> Plus one, right? I, I can make that happen. All right, cool, cool. White Eagle uh, Hall in Jersey yeah. City, New Jersey, November 14th. Two shows. You can look up the last match. You can go to uh, Matt Cardona's Instagram. There's a pinned post, and it'll take you right to the website. You can get your tickets and everything. It's uh, it's fun, man. It's a lot of fun, and I I... I I'm enjoying everything you're doing. I can't wait to see what's what, what you're gonna what trick you're gonna pull out of your hat next. Well, I mean, maybe I'll do that show as a two-time NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. So. Ooh, I can't wait! And the next time yeah. you heard it at the beginning of this conversation, the next time we do this, you'll be in the Not Sam Studio, and then I'll get a, a Matt Cardona Major Bendy. But you already have one. Not the tan. I'll get the I'll get the non tan one. Oh, uh, okay. You well, know. they're also that you have to wait for my Deathmatch King merch table exclusive that's coming any day now. That's what I'll do. I'll hit up but one of the you'll, conventions. You'll have, but you'll have to go to one of my shows. Though. I can't just give it. If it's a merch table exclusive. Are you going to have it at the at the uh, last match? Yeah, uh, if they come in in time, I might. Okay. All right. Well, if not, you can we'll give see. me a free ticket to one of your other shows. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't do cop tickets. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that comes out of my end, and that's not yeah, happening. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time and being so gracious, Thanks, Matt Cardona. Tim. It's always fun. See ya.